Not very surprised. Most of the dissenting voices were backbenchers. The Labour Party has traditionally includes the name being the party of working people. So I don't think any of us would have failed to see this coming. As far as the party being split is concerned, it's tricky waters for Keir Starmer. He doesn't want to be seen to support the Tories, but on the other hand, he doesn't want to side with militant leftists. So he's just keeping his mouth shut for the moment. The Mail, if you believe them, think he's a coward. But, I mean, this is the, a newspaper that had as its front page today, Labour isn't working, trying to evoke memories of the 1970s. The only party that's not working at the moment is the Tory party. Let's not forget, the Tories have been in government, yes, admittedly, initially with the Lib Dems, for 12 years. So these strikes are on Boris Johnson's watch. They're not on Keir Starmer's watch. And the very fact we're having this conversation shows that the tactics that CCHQ, Conservative Party HQ, are using in trying to divert attention to Keir Starmer and Labour Party are working to some degree. Uh, I, I mean, just as, as the person moderating this conversation, I would say, I mean, I think if the leader of a party has said to his MPs in fairly clear and stark terms, uh, don't be joining the picket lines, it's a bad look, then that does leave questions, legitimate questions, about the status of his authority. Let's, let's turn to Darren Grimes to see what he thinks about that. Uh, that contention from Matthew that uh, this is all cooked up by Conservative Central Office? I don't think so. I think actually you hark back to what Margaret Thatcher said about Neil Kinnock, which was along the lines of this gives you an indication of what a government, a Labour government under Neil Kinnock would look like. I think we're seeing what actually a Labour government would be doing, which is katawin to their union barons, right? Saying to them, well, we need your dosh, so we're going to go along with your demands. And all that does is escalate said demands. All that does is mean that we become an economic basket case. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn, let's not forget, was one politician who was saying that we should look to Venezuela as an alternative economic model for Britain. It's that sort of rhetoric that Sir Keir Starmer hasn't been able to actually move the Labour Party away from because, frankly, Colin, it still has far too many nutters in Parliament. Uh, Matthew, whenever I see one of our contributors chuckling, I always want to know why. Tell me. Because it's totally absurd. As I said, this is a government that has been in power for 12 years. We're talking about a, a divided Labour Party when Boris Johnson has just survived a no-confidence vote in his premiership by the skin of his teeth. A comfortable majority of backbenchers don't believe that Boris Johnson is the right man to lead their party. 25 MPs side with the picketers. I don't think that's a sign of a, a desperately divided Labour Party. How many meetings has Grant Shapps, who after all is the Transport Secretary, or Boris Johnson, who after all is the Prime Minister, how many meetings have they had with rail workers in recent months? That was a question that Keir Starmer asked at Prime Minister's Question Time this afternoon, which I watched. The answer, zero. Darren, just in terms of those Labour MPs on picket lines, they, they could do no other in a sense. I mean, yes, they could obey the instructions of, of their party leader, but many of them, uh, you know, they've, they've come through grassroots trades union organisations to become MPs. It's one of the routes into uh, becoming a, a Labour MP. Um, so in a sense, that it would be strange for some of them to turn their backs on a, on a moment like this. Well, do you know what, Colin? I, my sympathies very much lie with people like that. You know, my granddad was a miner. I come from a, a background, a working class background in the northeast of England where... My mother still very much relies upon her union. I'd be all for them, Colin, if they actually were on the side of working people. I think far too often now there is an elite contempt within trade unions. Look what they did after 2016. They did all they could to line up, most of them, the vast majority, Colin, to do all they could to challenge Brexit, to say, well, the vote of my members was wrong. Right. We need to overturn that. I think they have long been totally out of touch with those that pay them their wages. So, I mean, Matthew, I, I really don't think you can compare members of the shadow cabinet going out to picket with this cabinet. What? How many members of the cabinet actually went out and picketed with these people? None, because actually these people in cabinet are on the side of workers who want to go to work. They're on the side of school kids, Matthew, who want to go do their exams. 
And actually, if we go back to fundamental questions that we on this channel have been raising time and again, people like Matthew, I'm afraid, were far too often calling for stronger lockdowns and all of these other things, where actually that's responsible for the mess we find ourselves in right now. Not the Conservative government, but the lockdown strategy with ev which every parliamentarian waxed lyrical about the merits of. We haven't had that discussion. That's what's done this, not the Tories.